But we gave a general outline of how to uh, do the calculation of the annulus uh, partition function. Okay. So today we'll give more details, okay. but for that I have to give you the second dose of the bitter pill. Okay. So some introduction to open bosonic string field theory. And I'll assume that you are at least somewhat familiar with the wall sheet uh, formulation of string theory. Okay. And we'll be talking about the open wall sheet, so which is uh, simpler than the closed wall sheet. So we'll denote by H the vector space. the vector space of open string states, but this will include matter and host sector. And now let me introduce the notion of an off shell, off shell classical string field, classical open string field. Okay, this classical I'll explain in a few minutes. Psi, this by definition is a state in H with host number one. Okay, and let me remind you that the ghost number definition that we have given is that C carries ghost number one, B carries ghost number minus one, and the matter fields of course don't have any ghost number. Okay. So we'll denote, introduce a basic state, so let's call phi n r basic state of ghost number n in H. So then we can expand psi as a linear combination of the basis states. So let's call this psi r phi 1 r. And when I call this the string field, okay. that basically means that these coefficients of expansion are the dynamical variables, dynamical variables of the theory. So path integral is integral over the this psi r's. Okay, that's the meaning of the string field being a state of host number one. We'll give the action in terms of the psi r's in a few minutes. Okay. And this is a classical string field in the same sense that the usual Maxwell field Okay, mu is a classical field, okay. but in the full quantum theory, of course, you will also have the host. Right? So when I say classical string field, that only means that we have not included the hosts yet. Okay, the hosts that come from the Fourier proof of gauge fixing, that you have to do separately. Okay, so now I have to give the action, right? Because this path integral will have, have a weight factor e to the minus s in the Euclidean theory. So the, the action should be some number or some function of the psi r's. And here is the form of the action. Where this QB is what is called the BRST charge. Okay, and I will write down the explicit expression for this. 
are right in the language of conformal field theory as contour integral okay, of C of Z, Tm of Z. Okay, and this is of course a properly normal ordered. This Tm is the matter energy momentum tensor. Okay, which has C equal to 26. When I write T without a subscript, that corresponds to the full energy momentum tensor. If I am using other specifically matter or host, I'll write a subscript. So this QB is some operator in the open string Hilbert space, and then this is the inner product. So given any set of any, any set of variables uh, values for psi r, this generates a number, right? And that's what the action is supposed to do. It's supposed to generate a number for a given string field configuration. Is this notation clear? Okay, so this QB has some nice property, QB square is 0. And you can also see from the explicit expression that it has host number 1. Oh, I should have said that this is, when I wrote down the classical string field theory action, this is only the quadratic part and then there are interaction terms, which at least for today's lecture we will not need. which are cubic and higher order in coupling in the side. So because of this property, the S is invariant under a gauge transformation. Of the form delta psi equal to QB on lambda where well, lambda is a state of host number 1, because host number 0, state in H of host number 0. So in particular, we can expand lambda as sum over R, lambda R phi 0 R. And these numbers are what we will usually call the gauge transformation parameters. And the action is invariant simply because of this fact that the square of the BRST charge is 0. So when you transform psi by QB times lambda, okay, QB square just gives you 0. So you have to gauge fix. Now there may of course different possible gauge choices, but the one that is uh, commonly used and which is what makes connection of the wall sheet theory uh, uh, directly okay. is what is called the Siegel gauge. Okay. Where you put the condition that B0 on psi equal to 0. And in this case, the action takes a simple form. And that is half psi C0 L0 psi. Okay. This basically follows from the fact that when you look at the expression for QB, okay, the only term that on involves C0 is of the form C0 L0. Okay. And then there are terms without C0. So when you take the matrix element between two psi's, which are all both annihilated by B0, right, which is this gauge condition, then only the term that has a C0 contributes, 
and you get this as a gauge, uh, a gauge fixed action. So this, this is, is the L0 matter, right? No, no, not L0 matter. The, this is the full L0, right? So the point is here, the L0 matter comes from this term, hmm. but this term has an L0 host, uh -huh. okay, which is hidden here. Uh -huh. So when you actually look at the expand in the modes hmm. and look at the coefficient of C0, mm -hmm. right? It's exactly total L0. Total, okay. okay. So this is total. Thank Thanks. Now, once you have gauge fixed, of course, you have to introduce Fourier proof of hosts. So, need Fourier proof of hosts. And now, I'm going to state a result without giving a proof that the full action, so S total, okay, which basically means that S matter plus a S grade fixed plus S host has a form half psi tilde C0 L0 psi tilde where psi tilde is an arbitrary state in H. Okay, with some particular cases of this, we'll see later. So the only difference between this and this is that here there are more variables, right? Because psi tilde is an arbitrary state in H, so this of course contains this, but this contains many more. Okay, all the other host number states, and the interpretation of those other host number states, host number states, is that they are the Fourier proof hosts that count of this gauge fixing. Okay, so one, when one does a Fourier proof procedure for finding out what the kinetic term is, you find that it's basically this with the condition on host number relaxed. Is this statement clear? Just one part of this I'll illustrate uh, in a few minutes. So let's now introduce a new basis states, phi n r as the basis states in H of host number n. Satisfying the Siegel gauge condition. Okay, because high field will be expanded in this basis. But using this, we can also find the basis states of the classical phase. So the classical string field can be expanded as sum over R, chi R phi 1 R. Okay, this is similar to what we had earlier, except that now this includes only those basis states which are annihilated by uh, V0. And then the out of Siegel gauge modes, right, which are there before you gauge fixed, those can be written as sum over R, phi R, because the hot have called it 
no, I think called it phi r c 0 on phi 0 r. In other words, the basis states of the in ghost number 1, the total set of basis states in ghost number 1 can be thought of as a set of basis states in ghost number 1 that are annihilated by B0 okay. and those that are not annihilated by B0, okay, they are annihilated by C0. So, those can be written as C0 acting on basis states of ghost number 0. These are annihilated by B0. Okay. So, these together forms the total set of basis states of ghost number 1. Okay, this is just a convenient way to write the classical string field okay, for a reason that it will become will become clear soon. So, now we see that if we take lambda, if lambda we let us take some particular class of lambdas for which it is yes. Okay, because lambda has host number 1. So, this is a linear combination of states of host number 1. I have not included the ones which have uh, also C0. Right? I have just chosen a particular class of gauge transforms in parameters. Then delta psi, which is QB lambda. QB, uh, recall that it has a C0 L0. Just a question. Yes. Uh, this lambda is different from the lambda, uh, the previous one. This Okay, you can say it's the same except that the sum is over a uh, subset. Oh yeah. Right? Because this uh, this is running over only the basis states of host number zero with uh, annihilated by B0. That lambda war was multiplying the full basis states. Okay. I have just chosen a particular uh, subset of gauge transformations, okay, which have this property. Thank you. So then Q B lambda has a term which is C0 L0 acting on sum over R lambda R. 0 r okay. and then there are terms without c 0. Because q b the c 0 part is this. So, now if you compare this, right, see this is the expansion of psi the classical string field. If you compare this with this, okay, we will find that delta phi r delta of sum over r phi r sorry I should okay. So, delta of this is C 0 sum over r lambda r L 0 phi 0 r. So, this basically tells us that in this basis the operator that relates the gauge transformation parameter to the fields involve this L 0. If you write in components I can write this as delta phi r as h r times lambda r where h r is the L 0 eigenvalue of phi 0 r. Is this clear? Because this one is will be C 0 sum over r lambda r h r phi 0 r. Okay, so, if you just compare this with this, you will see the delta phi r is lambda r h r, right, which is what I have written here. So, this says that in this basis the relation between the fields and the gauge transformation parameters is given by this h r which is the L 0 eigenvalue and that is what is supposed to enter the host determinant. If you recall when you have gauge fix if in the Siegel gauge you gauge fix these objects right phi r's are out of Siegel gauge field. So, the Siegel gauge corresponds to setting phi r equal to 0 and you say the relationship between the fields that you have gauge fixed and the gauge transformation parameters involve the L 0 eigenvalue. Okay, HR. Okay. And that is the reason why in the ghost kinetic term also you get this easy L0. Is this point clear? Right. So, I am just giving a 
uh, argument as to why L0 appears in the host kinetic trap, right? Of course, the fact that L0 appears in the original action is a consequence of the fact that there is a QB. But it also acts in the host kinetic term because of this observation that the part of QB that is relevant in the single gauge is the C0 L0 part. And then L0 eigenvalue will be the host, will, be, will enter the host carbonate. Okay, so let's start with that. Okay, get the full action, S total, and half psi tilde C zero L zero psi tilde. Okay. And now we want to normalize the basis states in such a way that this has the form that we encountered earlier. Last time you recall that we identified certain quadratic term as the open string field theory action. Okay. So today we are going to show that this has that form, okay. but for that you have to appropriately normalize the basis states because the coefficient of string fields are the coefficients of expansion in the basis state. Right. So you can write psi tilde in general as sum over let me call it. Did I write anything? No. Psi tilde r pi r. Okay, but these include the matter fields, host fields, uh, the classical fields, host fields, and uh, uh, everything else. Now we compare this with. Half sum over b h b psi b square plus sum over f h f e f e f. This is the form we had in the last lecture, right? When you try to express the annulus partition function in this form. So we see from here that we should pick up the coefficient of psi b square should be h b. And this can be achieved if can be achieved if in the ghost number one sector right because then this will be of the form hr psi, psi r tilde square if we normalize the basis state this way. Is that clear? Right, just substitute this expression here and use this normalization. Okay, L0 of course will just pick up the L0 eigenvalue and we will get this form. So this is for the bosonic field, this is a classical field. Okay. But the, in order to get this, we need to organize. So let's look at the host number two, host number zero sector, phi two r, c zero, phi zero s, should be delta r s. So here I have used the fact that the total host number must add up to three in order to get a non-zero for non-zero matrix element. So let me then summarize if, if you haven't followed everything. So this is the gauge fixed form of the string field theory action, okay, which has matter goes everything. In order to make connection with what we had earlier, okay, because earlier we had a proper integration measure, 
okay, but we just uh, declare that the exponent, whatever appears in the exponent is the uh, string field theory action. In order that that form matches this, we just have to choose the basis state satisfying this conditions, right? And then there are other conditions for other host number which I'll not need. Is this clear? Yes. Sorry, I lost the point there. When we expand phi tilde as uh, phi tilde rn uh, phi, uh, so, sorry, yeah, psi, psi tilde, tilde phi, yeah, yes. that one. Uh, psi tilde was any state of the Hilbert space, right? Subject to be zero on psi tilde equal to zero. Oh. Because we are gauge fixed, right? So psi tilde is any state in the Hilbert space, but all satisfying the single gauge condition. Okay, but didn't, like when you had back the, the string field theory ghosts, didn't we get back the, the whole Hilbert space? No, no, uh, maybe I, I, if I didn't mention it, let me say it now. That psi tilde, arbitrary state in H, okay, satisfying B0 psi tilde equal to zero. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Because if you had gotten arbitrary state, then even in the classical sector, you would have gotten back the ones that you have gauge fixed, right? So you need the, so this, uh, this is a statement. That psi tilde is an arbitrary state sa satisfying B0 psi tilde equal to zero, and that's how you can expand psi tilde in this basis. So compared to what we had yesterday, right, let's just recall what we have achieved. We have just adjusted so the action, string field theory action takes the same form as what we had yesterday. Right? So that is not what uh, is a new achievement. Okay? But the new achievement is that now we know that when we expand the string field theory in a basis, how the basis state should be normalized. And that will be important because these basis states that multiply these those will be the vortex operators of the states that you have to use, right? And it fixes the normalization of the vortex operators. Because now, when you calculate various correlation functions, we have to use the vortex operator with the specific normalization. Okay, and we'll see that that will be important in how we normalize the vortex operator. So now let me be more specific and try to expand the classical string field. And here I'll just do in the L0 equal to 0 sector. Because that's where the problem came. Sorry, L0 less than or equal to 0. Okay, that's where the problems, problematic states came. Right? We saw that for L0 larger than 0, the integrals are perfectly convergent, and so there is no issue. So, so far this was quite general, right? Now we go back to again to the boson extreme. So the classical string field expansion, okay, which is before gauge fixing. So this is before gauge fixing. Is
Okay, let me write the all the terms and then I will explain various ambiguities, etc., which might crop up. So, the gauge parameter okay, again we are looking at the L0 less than or equal to 0 state. So, this is I theta in the vacuum. And then the in the gauge fixed theory, we put psi tilde as So, this alpha minus 1 is the oscillator of the x field. Of x satisfying alpha minus 1, alpha 1, sorry, alpha 1, alpha minus 1 is 1. Okay, that is how we normalize it. And using that, we can check that this basis state does satisfy this condition. Okay, the norm is just 1. Because C gives the norm 1. C minus 1, C 0, C 1 is 1. This one, I'll the normalization of this, I am going to come back in a uh, minute. Because this is not fixed by that. Okay? This is only for the basis states with uh, which are in the single gauge. So, this I have fixed to be just the vacuum is the only one. The normalization of this, in fact, is not very important. Okay, how you normalize? Okay, and the for reasons that I will um, explain. Okay. All we need is that this normalization, right, whatever you normalize this state, okay, this state should be C0 on that. Okay, that is this feature that if you have taken the basis states, normalization of the basis states in some way, okay, then the out of single gauge states will be C0 on those basis states. Right? That is the statement. So, if I have taken this to be the basis state to be I times the vacuum, so this should also be I C0 acting on I on I times the vacuum. Because you will see that if you normalize, if you change the normalization of this and normalization of this, then both phi and theta will be normalized in the same way. Okay. And that, in fact, does not affect the final result because if you recall in the final expression, we had an integral over phi in the numerator and an integral over theta in the denominator. Okay. So, if you both normalize both phi and theta, it makes no difference. Okay. This i, I have just put in, okay, because with this i, it turns out that phi and theta are real. Okay. Without this i, phi and theta will be imaginary uh, variables. But again, at the end, it does not matter because it will just cancel out because you have integral d phi and integral d theta ratio. Here, okay, so these, of course, you have already fixed. This is, you can recognize this as the L0 equal to minus 1 state, right? That is the uh, one which gave the HB equal to minus 1. So these two states, okay, this is ghost number 0, this is ghost number 2. I have to make sure that the inner product between this and this with C0 in between is 1. Okay? That is the statement. The host number 2, host number 0 state should be normalized this way. Okay? But that does not fix individually the normalization of 0 or this. Okay? You can scale this down, scale this up. But the inner product should be fixed. Which means that if you scale this down and scale this up, then u will be scaled down and v will be scaled up. But that again does not affect the final result because you had integral du dv. 
Okay, so du dv is unchanged under this uh, rescaling. Okay, so while there are ambiguities in uh, this basic expansion, okay, as long as you satisfy these constraints, all those ambiguities go away in the final expression. Is this clear? So now let me explain how we find the relationship between psi b0, so relation between between psi b0 and y. Because all this was done to do that, right? Relation between psi b0 and y and the relation between theta and alpha. So from here we see that a psi 0 is multiplied, so psi b0 appears in this combination, psi b0 is q1 alpha minus 1 on vacuum. Okay. And this I can write in the vortex of portal language as psi b0 i root 2. where x is normalized as this is standard normalization that one uses for the worsted scalars plus non-singular. So because of this 1 over 2 here, I need a square root of 2 in the definition of alpha mi minus 1 and because of this minus sign I need an i. So now the way we proceed is the following. That we know that y dependence, y dependence of an amplitude, of any amplitude, should be of the form e to the i omega y where omega is the total energy. Okay, so which you can write as 1 plus i omega y plus higher order terms as a Taylor series expansion. Okay. So this basically says that the y insertion should produce a factor of i omega. C also. We compare this with psi b insertion. From the state that multiplies it, we can conclude that psi b insertion, what it does is that it inserts integral i root 2 del x of z dz on the boundary. Okay, this is by the standard state operator correspondence and then you have to do this from unintegrated to integrated vortex operator, but just from the structure of the vortex operator, we know that this corresponds to inserting this on the boundary of the disk or whatever boundary of the world sheet. So you can take a simple wall sheet like a disk and put some closed string vortex operators v1, v2 up to vn with the energy say omega 1, omega 2 up to omega n, sorry with your momentum, yeah so which is also the energy in this case because it's the momentum conjugate to x. And then we can use the operator for expansion op. is the del x of z v of 
W is or V i of W is i omega i the minus 2 z minus w i of w. Let me call this w i. Okay, so this op basically follows from this. Okay, because v i has a factor of it to the i k i omega i x of w i. Okay, using that you can read out this op. And oh, I should have said something else. Okay. So, when I said it is this, it, there is a another factor here, geo, okay, which is the open string coupling constant. Okay, this is related to GS, but we will see that we do not we, we don't need it. This comes because anytime you insert an open string, you should accompany it by a vertex of, uh, by a coupling constant, right? Anytime you insert a closed string, it carries a factor of GS. Anytime you open, you insert an open string, it will carry a factor of GO. So what we have is that we have this operator, I root to del x inserted at the boundary. We are integrating this, and we know that the Z with WIOP has this structure. So, you can do this by Cauchy's theorem, right? If you know the residue at every pole, we can use Cauchy's theorem to evaluate this. And let me just get the final expression. So, final expression is that it is i, i pi square root of 2. E O sum over k omega k times original amplitude. Amplitude without psi b. So now we see that we can compare this with what we had we would have expected i omega y. Okay. So this tells us that i omega y should be i pi root 2 g o sum over k omega k psi b. Sorry, so this is of course just omega, yeah. what we call omega there. So this cancels to time. Psi b. Okay. Or another psi b is y over, oh, here there is omega, but omega cancels y over pi root 2 ok. So, this is what we called k 1. So, this is what we had called k 1 y. Well, this is the way we calculate k 1. Again, the details of the calculation you can work out, but the philosophy is simply that you have to first, first fix the normalization of the basis states in, uh, 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 in which you uh, do the string field expansion. And that normalization is fixed because we want to reproduce the answer that the annulus amplitude gave, right? And that required that we normalize, we, we, we have certain form of the action, okay? And so, for to get that form of the action, uh, 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 action, we have to normalize the basis states in a certain way. Okay. And once you normalize the basis states that way, we can compare the coupling of y to coupling of psi b and get the result. Are there questions?
So let me briefly say about how to determine the relation between theta and alpha. So the strategy is more or less the same. So take a state xi, any open string state, with one end on the incenton, the incenton. Okay, now of course open strings have two ends. Right, so if, if one end is on the instant, on the other end has to be somewhere. Okay. And the point is, it doesn't matter what that something is, but you need to add some spectator brain. It could be another d instant also. Spectator d brain. Okay. And any state of this open string, I'm calling xi. And the standard u1 gauge transformation. is xi goes to e to the i alpha times xi, right, which, sorry, yeah, xi goes to e to the i alpha times xi, which you can write as 1 plus i alpha xi plus higher order terms. Okay. So delta xi is i alpha xi. Right, this is the standard infinitesimal gauge transformation law with standard normalization of alpha. And this has to be compared with the string field theory gauge transformation of of xi. Okay. And I should say here that this part of the gauge transformation is not what I have written down so far. Okay, so because here you need the nonlinear part. The linear part is like delta a equal to the derivative of lambda. Very, very much theta, right? That part we had written down, but there's a you need to be called a nonlinear part because this is really nonlinear gauge transformation, right? It has a product of the transformation parameter and a field. But this is known, of course, and the general form that it takes is delta xi equal to some constant times theta, and this constant is given in terms of three point function. Xi, three point function of theta, xi, and its conjugate state, which I'll denote by xi. So these have their own vortex operators, which have to be normalized. But the point is that the theta. Normalization has been fixed, right? You see that this is i times the vacuum we have already fixed. That's the vortex of order for theta. So the vortex of order for this is i times identity. Okay? Since theta multiplies, theta multiplies i times on the vacuum. And because it's proportional to identity, okay, this calculation in fact simplifies because now you have a two-point function of xi and its conjugate state, okay, but that's basically one because xi, xi is normalized state, right? Because once one is identity, this is two-point function is just one. Okay. So basically, what you find is a delta xi in this language becomes i times g open theta. Okay, any three point function, again, you have to insert a, a factor of g open. 
So now compare this with this, and that gives you theta equal to alpha over g open. Okay, and this is I think what we had called k2. Are there questions? So let me just put things together. So exponential of the annulus partition function will be given by i, okay, this came from the integral d chi over square root of 2 pi e to the chi square by 2, that is the tachyonic board. Then you have a root pi, this came from integral d phi e to the minus s, okay, and s turns out to be phi square. Okay. This in fact we saw in the uh, uh, gauge theory language yesterday, but from the string field theory also, if we just evaluate s in the background phi, phi is the state that multiplies c0 on c0 on tachyum, right. If you evaluate the action for this state, you will find exactly phi square. So, this gives you root pi. Okay. Then the psi b, okay. we had a 1 over square root of 2 pi, okay. In fact, I think yesterday when I wrote down the expression I had missed out this term, but this is of course there because the integration method is g psi b over square root of 2 pi. Then this k2, right, the relation between psi and pi, so that is 1 over pi root 2 u and then 1 over integral d theta, 1 over, so this whole thing comes from psi b and the theta integral gives you 1 over g, 1 over g open times 2 pi, okay, because alpha integral gives you 2 pi. So, integral d theta is 1 over g open integral d alpha which is 2 pi g open. Okay, so, g open cancels in this case. Okay, but it does not always happen. Sometimes there are factors of g open left over and I think if you put everything together, you get i over 4 pi square. And very important, the y integral is left till the end, okay, as we described. Okay. And so, you will at the end, we will have a 2 pi delta e. This comes from the y integral, integral dy to the i e y. And this result in fact agrees with the dual description, right. We already had known this and the result from a dual matrix model calculation and it indeed agrees with the matrix model results. Are there questions? Okay. So, let me then finish by writing down the list of examples where this has been done, right. I described just one example, c equal to 1 uh, to 2d bosonic string theory. But let me list all the examples and I will not give the references, but you can find the references in the notes that part of which has already been uploaded probably. So, cases where this has been done. So, 2D string theory I already showed. Then there is a class of theories which are called C less than 1 string theory. Okay, these are 
similar to 2D except that you don't have any X. And uh, instead you have a CFT with sentence as less than one. Then the supersymmetric cases, various supersymmetric cases, 2B in D equal to 10. Two A or two B on Calabi or threefold. So this means three dimensional Calabi or six dimensional Calabi or space, six real dimensional Calabi or spaces. Six real dimension. This is relevant for string phenomenology. Then the orienti folds of these. Then some formionic kind of string theory type zero B. Okay, and something that is still not published, but hopefully it will come out soon is the sign label theory. These are more complicated version of the 2D string theory that I described where the scale of the x and phi, the x and the phi Liouville field, instead of being independent fields, they are coupled. Okay, so that is the sign label theory. And what one finds is that wherever the answer is known from a dual description, okay, this gives results in agreement. When the answer is not known from a dual description, then this just gives new results okay, for the uh, uh, d instant or amplitudes. Okay, so this is as much as I will say about the normalization. Okay. So tomorrow I will describe the higher order calculations, okay, which includes for example the disk 2 point function and annulus uh, uh, 1 point function. Okay. And we will see that it requires a new, uh, slightly different kind of technology okay, other than what we have studied so far. Okay, so you have to learn a little more about string field theory and then we will see how we handle those. Is this uh, clear so far? So in the re remaining time, I will try to give a introduction to the last part of string field theory, what we need. So you have a question? Um, yes. So you mentioned the check with the dualities when you have a dual description. Yes. So in those cases, uh, do you see that these instant on corrections are all the instant on correction or, or do you see signs of, or, or, uh, of uh, other corrections be, that are uh, be, beyond this? Yeah. I think that in the dual description, the only ones that are known that, have, uh, I mean, that follow from supersymmetry, etc., are the de-instant on corrections. I think in these examples in type 2 or type 2 and Calabio threefold, there are some signs of the NS fiber instantons. Okay, but those have, I mean, even in the dual description, they are not very well studied. But certainly there is a signal that those are there. But these are the dominant instantons because NS fiber instantons are certainly subdominant. Other question? So from this, the gauge fixed action, let us go back to the gauge fixed string field theory action. It had this structure of half psi tilde C0 L0 psi tilde. So this tells us that the propagator is 
is proportional to 1 over L0. Okay, this is for the open string. Okay, so let's we'll just let's just keep this in mind for a while, and then describe how exactly string field theory works. Because I said that it's designed so that it reproduces the usual Warsi amplitudes, at least formally. Right? But let me just explain how it does it. So string field theory, because it's an like an ordinary quantum field theory, you can calculate the amplitudes using Feynman diagrams. So in SFT, we can compute amplitudes using Feynman diagrams. Okay, so for example, if you are calculating a four-point function, three-point function typically is just this, okay. but a four-point function at three level will include terms like this. Etc. Okay, and then there is also contact term. So it turns out that each of these Feynman diagrams, so each of these Feynman diagrams gives integral over a subspace of the Riemann surface moduli space with correct integral. Okay, now let me explain what I mean by correct integral. So I said that the wall sheet expressions Wall-sheet expressions involve integrals over moduli space of the one surfaces. For example, for the, the disk two point function, one point you can fix at the origin okay, because of the SL2 are invariant, but the other one you have to integrate along a line. So that is the integral kind of integral you are talking about. Right? So each string amplitude involves certain integrals. And the string filter is designed so that each Feynman diagram gives part of this integral. Okay? But when I say part of this integral, Integrand is exactly the same as that we get in the wall sheet. Is the integral runs over a subspace of what it is supposed to run over. Okay, so for example, here if the integral was supposed to run from zero to one, say from the origin to the boundary, okay, one of the diagrams will give you say from origin to some some place, and the other diagram may give from that place to the boundary. Okay, this is the way. The string field theory Feynman diagrams give the wall sheet expressions. Is this statement clear? Now, what is a little surprising here is that normally when you talk about Feynman diagrams like this, okay. you don't have any integrals. Okay. Sometimes in the loop moment, in the loop, you have momentum integrals, but otherwise the Feynman diagrams like this don't have any integrals. Right. So, you can ask where does the integrals that come in, in the wall sheet come from? 
and the short answer is that the integrals come come from Swinger parameter representation. So, this more specifically this 1 over L 0 in the term in the propagator, the propagator may also have some numerators that are not important for now. The 1 over L 0 okay, in Swinger parameterization is replaced by d t e to the minus t L 0. Okay, I do not know whether you are familiar with this. Typically, when you have 1 over k square plus m square in the propagator, right, you replace it in the Swinger parameterization by this. Well, that is the Swinger parameterization and it is this integrals over t that become integration over the word line on the world sheet. Okay, after appropriate change of variables, we find that the integrals over t become the integrals over the moduli on the world sheet. Is this statement clear? So, now that you have understood how the integrals in the, the world sheet integrals emerge out of string field theory, we can ask how do the divergences that you see in the world sheet description emerge in string field theory, right? What is the origin of the divergences? So, for this, let us examine this formula a little more, okay? Let me write this again 1 over L0 equal to integral 0 to infinity dt e to the minus t L 0. Now, if you look at this formula, you will find that this is of course, an identity for L 0 eigenvalue positive. Given any L 0 eigenvalue positive L 0 eigenvalue, this integral can be done and it is clearly equal to the right left hand side. But for L0 less than 0, the right hand side is divergent. Right? Left hand side is perfectly finite. So, this is one of the ways the divergence in the world sheet is cured by string field theory. That if we have in the world sheet, right, the world sheet does not know that we are, this is a representation like this, right, the world sheet just uses this. And if you use this, you will get a divergence from t goes to infinity n for negative L0. Okay. But if you use this, then there is no divergence. So, this is one way string field theory cures the divergent integrals in the world sheet. The more subtle ones are L0 equal to 0 states. For L0 equal to 0, both sides diverge. Right? So, the string field theory by itself does not help. Nevertheless, you see that on string field theory side, we have a physical understanding of where the divergence is coming from. Right? So, in SFT, the divergence comes from an internal propagator going on shell. because you are basically at the pole of the propagator, right? 1 over L 0 is the propagator, so you are basically sitting on the pole. 
and in quantum field theory, you know that whenever an internal propagator goes on shell, right, there is a procedural defect. That is, there is something wrong you are doing with that procedure. So otherwise, you should never encounter a situation where an internal propagator goes on shell. Right? You are just trying to use, for example, Feynman diagrams. If you try to use Feynman diagrams with zero modes, right, then you will encounter such things. But we know that the zero modes are not to be treated as using Feynman diagrams. So while string field theory does not directly cure these divergences, it tells us how to, that it, it gives us a physical interpretation in the language of quantum field theory. And once you have that physical interpretation, then we can use insights from quantum field theory to cure these divergences. Okay, and that will be the basic philosophy, how we remove these divergent in, divergences from that we encounter in the worksheet integrals. And finally, I should just say that all the divergences that we ever encounter in the worksheet calculation are of this kind. Right? Once you translate it to the language of string field theory, you find that all the divergences are coming essentially because of the wrong use of Swinger parameterization. Okay, so once you understand, so this is the reason why string field theory, worksheet theory is very useful because it gives you, it gives a very compact way of uh, uh, writing the amplitudes. Okay. But when worksheet theory fails in the form of divergences, then you have to go back to string field theory and try to interpret what the divergences are due to and then resolve it using insights from quantum field theory. So this is what we will try to do next time. Okay, let us uh, thank uh, Ashok for the nice lecture. Okay, if there are no urgent questions, we can uh, postpone uh, the question for the discussion. Now there is a coffee break. We will meet at uh, 11.